women are supposed to have babies not orgasms you know when i got myself a vibrator my first vibrator at like age 27 um you know i was able to have an orgasm like every time in a matter of like 2 or 3 minutes and it blew my mind i didn't know i was capable of experiencing pleasure in this way hi my name is lisa mangaldas and i'm a sex positive content creator and i'm delighted to be here on health shots on the occasion of international female orgasm day and we're going to be answering some of your most frequently asked questions around orgasms An orgasm is a sort of peak of sexual pleasure or arousal. Uh, I like to think of it as like the wonderful explosion of pleasure that sort of you build up to during intimacy, uh, whether on your own or with a partner. It's not necessary that you only have orgasms with a partner. You can also explore self pleasure, one of my favorite things, and um, it's often defined as a sort of physiological and psychological event because. Your brain is releasing a bunch of hormones that make you feel really good, but you're also probably going to experience muscle spasm, heavy breathing, and increased heart rate, things like that. So overall, it can feel like a sort of emotional and physical release. Um, and for penis owners, it's often accompanied by the literal release of ejaculate. Sometimes also for vulva owners, but. you know that's not essential and overall it's just a really pleasurable feeling and many people enjoy this sort of catharsis of letting go during an orgasm so you know there's no right answer to this question there isn't like the ideal duration for an orgasm it can vary it may last a few seconds it may last a few minutes and maybe if the sex was really significant or if you just really enjoyed the experience you might kind of you know look back at that feeling all day or all week i mean i think uh, pleasure is such a wonderful thing and it can really be um such a significant and memorable experience for some people when it's great so in that regard i mean your orgasm might keep you uh, in a in a in a positive frame of mind for very long but i think the actual event typically lasts a few seconds to a few minutes and yeah i mean it can vary different people also might have different uh types of orgasms even you know within the same relationship or within the same encounter like there's really no one answer to how long orgasms last i i think uh, this is going to be a long answer <laughs> um you know particularly in the context of heterosexual relationships sex tends to be defined as penetration sex equals penis inside a vagina now this is a very limiting definition of sex um and a definition that doesn't really serve women's pleasure because uh, the most reliable route to orgasm for most people with vulvas is the clitoris and most straight couples totally ignore or forget or just sort of don't pay enough attention to the clitoris during sex i mean the focus is on the penis and penetration and the majority of vulva owners do not experience orgasm from penetration alone alone clitoral stimulation is also required um and you know i think unfortunately because of this very heteronormative definition of sex as penetration many women end up feeling like is there something wrong with me why can't i orgasm during penetration is you know or there's this myth that like female orgasms are really difficult and complicated and mysterious but i think the the fact is actually that there's no inherent you know difficulty or something complicated about female orgasms but rather that we are approaching them in the wrong way and we don't know enough about the anatomy um so you know i think it's really worth remembering that anatomically speaking actually the clitoris is the homolog to the penis not the vagina you know like when a fetus is developing it's the same tissue that actually develops into either a penis or a clitoris um during sexual differentiation and it's in many ways very similar to the penis it has a little hood kind of like the foreskin it becomes engorged with blood when it you know it kind of this is some erection of the clitoris when aroused um uh, it 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 also has a little head the glands and a shaft i mean in many ways it is very similar to the penis now imagine if we did not pay any attention to the penis during sex everyone uh deserves pleasure pleasure is a right 
and you are born with the capacity for pleasure if you so choose to seek it obviously i mean if you're not um you know interested in that that's absolutely fine i'm not saying everybody has to masturbate but i do think that if you are seeking pleasure and you do want to explore your body's capacity for pleasure then you don't have to wait for somebody else and it certainly isn't the case that your body belongs to someone else you know i think we're taught about sex particularly as women as a sort of means for reproduction women are supposed to have babies not orgasms you know um that's the kind of messaging we get and i think that it is so wonderful as a woman to discover just how much pleasure your body is capable of if that is something you're interested in exploring and so self pleasure and creating a sort of self pleasure practice for yourself can be a gateway into your your own sort of sexual self knowledge you know you figure out your own body and what feels good and it can really make partnered sex much more pleasurable because it's hard to communicate about what makes you feel good if you don't know what makes you feel good see i think it kind of is what i mentioned in the earlier answer that there's so much um that you know we're not taught a lot about our bodies right we're not taught in accurate detail about things like the clitoris the fact that it extends internally the fact that there's no actual bump or structure or gland called the g spot inside rather it's just that the anterior wall of the vagina is a sensitive region given its proximity to the internal clitoris and the urethra more recent scientific research has tried to rename what was thought of as the g spot the clito urethro vaginal complex because that's more indicative of what's going on there you know many people actually thought there's some button to look for in there and then they like i don't think i have one is there something wrong with me because for 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 decades i mean we've been fed this type of thing you know even uh, cosmopolitan magazine actually issued an apology in 2020 for perpetuating the myth that the g spot is actually a physical structure you know they were like sorry we got it wrong for 30 years <laughs> um but like in these ways i feel uh women have been sort of led to believe one that they should be able to orgasm from penetration um two you know that it's kind of shameful or i mean you're going to be judged if you're like very assertive about sex so you're kind of supposed to take the passive role and just do whatever he wants to do these are i'm 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 sorry to be a little heteronormative in my descriptions here but i meant in the context of straight relationships there tends to be this thing you know that the woman's pleasure is kind of secondary and that it's like unwomanly to be assertive about wanting or liking sex so we're fed some wrong information and then on top of that we're also meant to be shy and as if we're disinterested and you know reluctantly giving in so i feel this conditioning is very damaging and very limiting and we need to dismantle this conditioning we need to access the accurate information about our bodies get to know our own bodies and we also need to sort of you know um let go of all the shame because it's really hard to enjoy something that you feel ashamed of enjoying right and to some extent i mean even i and most women who have grown up in a in the world <laughs> given how sex negative and patriarchal it is and most people actually not just women we all tend to have some amount of sexual shame because the world will ensure that you know a lot of women admit to the fact that they have faked an orgasm at least once it tends to be a sort of majority experience for women that said you know even some men will have faked an orgasm at some point people of all genders may find themselves in a situation at some point where it might seem like the easiest way to end the sex is to fake an orgasm um and i mean i think this comes with the sort of cultural ideas around you know you're going to hurt your partner's ego if you don't uh orgasm or they're going to feel inadequate or you know some kind of combination of fear shame not wanting to hurt the other person so typically i would think that the reasons people fake orgasm are reasons that it would be wonderful if we could kind of find solutions to right faking an orgasm just allows for you to exit the situation as soon as you can which is which is valid i'm not saying that's you know bad or something i mean even i've done it but wouldn't it be nice if we could communicate with our partners and be honest about it that you know this is not happening or do things this way this would feel better for me it would be nice right if we could do that because the, the one thing that does happen when you fake an orgasm is you've led your partner to believe that that felt good so they're likely to do it again yeah of course people should happily take their own time uh, i think you know people also underestimate how much 
a role your sort of state of mind plays in your ability to enjoy yourself like if you're stressed out or if you feel unsafe or if you don't feel respected it's really hard to be aroused even if all the physical things are being done correctly so on the one hand you need to like be in the right state of mind and feel relaxed and you know and and it can take a while to get out of your head i mean it takes me a long time sometimes just to like stop thinking about the 50 things i need to do and the bills and the you know stresses especially during the pandemic um so that's normal it can take a while to get out of your head and get into a, a sort of sexy state of mind you know i think couples should spend more time um getting into that sexy state of mind instead of it being like you know wham bang like penetration and it's over uh, most of us as heterosexual couples um as far as heterosexual couples go it tends to be like erection penetration ejaculation and the sex ends when he comes you know um rather than thinking about it as a sort of shared experience and prioritizing both partners pleasure uh, i do think though for me what was so radical um i used to think like it takes me so long to orgasm and like that my pleasure is so complicated but when i got myself a vibrator my first vibrator at like age 27 um you know i was able to have an orgasm like every time in a matter of like 2 or 3 minutes and it blew my mind i didn't know i was capable of experiencing pleasure in this way and that is not to say that a vibrator is better than a man i think there's so many silly um i don't know like that, that this is a competition or it's threatening or something no so i think that it's it's a great thing to to add to the bedroom rather than competing with your partner it can be a really fun thing to use together um or alone i mean it was just for me so nice to discover that this thing exists that's like a little orgasm machine for me you know and i remember thinking when i first um used my vibrator that like oh my gosh i wish it would rain vibrators i want everybody with a vulva to have one um so yeah i feel like it's great to know that that exists because it can be quite life altering for people with vulvas many people have their first orgasm with a vibrator something that's also worth noting though i know i've talked a lot about the clitoris and the vulva and everything but what's really fascinating is that it's actually possible to orgasm in many different ways um many people even report orgasming from the stimulation of the ears the neck the back kissing nipple stimulation some people even have core orgasms some people are able to have mental orgasms um and not that i mean look no pressure you don't have to have oh, it's not a bucket list to check but it's nice to know that non genital body parts are also worth paying attention to this so often when we're thinking of sex we think genitals um but it can be amazing to spend like half an hour you know having your back kissed or your neck and ears and nipples kissed or whatever it is and i feel we don't do that enough because we jump straight to the penetration <laughs> so i i wanted to just remind you that there's all sorts of ways that pleasure and orgasm can be experienced